All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Wes Jackson. I am the president, chief science officer, officer and co-founder of Valator. Uh, this is our first time presenting at OIS, so uh, really looking forward to this opportunity uh, to share with you what we've been doing over the last few years and what we hope to be doing in the next few years. Um, one of the key challenges we set out to solve at Valator was to improve intravitreal durability. And the reason we wanted to take on this challenge is because we observed intravitreal injections are a great way to target tissues in the back of the eye like the retina. We have decades of uh, safety data now showing that they are um, uh, safe, it's a safe procedure, and uh, it's become very routine. And as a result, um, this is doing its own thing. <laughs> Um, as a result, there are uh, many new medicines that are being developed uh, as a way to take advantage of this route of administration, um, but our observation is these new drugs as well as existing drugs such as the anti-VEGFs are all going to suffer from the same pain point of needing uh, frequent administration. So at Valator, we've developed a drug development platform that we're using to enable reliable and durable treatments to the back of the eye. And everything we do at Valator is based on a platform technology that we call multivalent polymer conjugation. We take multiple copies of a drug moiety and we conjugate those to long chain biopolymers. And we do this, we create these tethered clusters of drugs that are all able to serve as a, as a macromolecular structure. And uh, when we do this, the, the structures have a number of uh, features that are really important for intravitreal durability. So uh, the constructs you can see are quite a bit larger than the individual drug components. So we can engineer the rate at which we want them to be clearing out of a target tissue. The biopolymer helps to protect the drug from the challenging environment of the back of the eye. And also when we put multiple drugs on the backbone, we're able to engineer these uh, multivalent interactions that, that it are, it enable us to uh, coordinate higher potency than the individual drug compounds. And this is really important because the idea of using a biopolymer to increase the size of the drug and therefore to increase the durability of the drug isn't necessarily new. There's been strategies over the years that use biopolymers for this purpose. But by and large, they all suffer from the same problem. And, and to illustrate that, imagine taking a drug and typically you could use a peg in order to extend its size and therefore uh, increase its uh, uh, durability. But as a result of the interference of that biopolymer, you now have uh, a hit on the, the potency of the drug. If you want uh, the drug to stay in the eye longer, you can add more polymers or longer polymers, but either way you're creating more drug interference. And eventually you may be able to create a drug that's large enough that you keep it in the tissue as long as you want, but you've put so much interference from the biopolymer that you've now abrogated the activity of the drug. And we've turned this strategy on its head. So we still use the biopolymer to give us the size and durability that we want, but uh, because we have these multivalent interactions, we can actually coordinate higher potency from the product. And we're able to just keep doing this if we want longer durability, increase the size of the biopolymer. And what we do is just create more opportunities for multivalent interactions, and therefore we can continue to drive up the potency of the product. So this gives us the ability to decouple the potency and the durability of the products to make superior medicines. And so as an example of that, let me just introduce you to our lead product. It's a, a VLTR557. It's a long-acting anti-VEGF biologic that we're designing for once every six month administration. And so the, for the biologic component, we started not with a typical IgG, but the camelid, IG, uh, camelid antibody that's, that's shown next to it. This is advantageous because we're able to take advantage of the single binding element to inhibit the anti-VEGF and actually just lop off the, the FC domain so we have a very small anti-VEGF inhibitor that we've then engineered with some specific motifs to give us stability in the challenging environment of the back of the eye. We've conjugated that to long chain hyaluronic acid. We like hyaluronic acid because it's endogenous to the back of the eye, it's biocompatible, but it also has some really great biophysical properties that enable us to take on these really huge hydrated structures and, and really drive the durability. And just for reference, the little guy there on the left is a, is a typical IgG, so you get a sense of how large these constructs are. Um, when we combine our anti-VEGF biologic with the hyaluronic acid, we get our lead product, VLTR557, uh, an anti-VEGF biologic for wet AMD that's, that's uh, engineered for durable reliability. And we do think that anti uh, VLTR557 will be the, the next, next generation treatment to, to treat wet AMD. Um, based on all of our preclinical studies, we expect to have greater than six months efficacy in the human eye. Um, this is important to overshoot our clinical goal because we want to make sure we're able to deliver the same uh, reliable durability to most, if not all, patients. 
The product itself is completely transparent. There's no risk of interference in the visual pathways, and it's not a depot, so there's no residual biomaterials that are left over in the eye. The construct and the inhibited VEGF are all cleared from the eye together. It is easily injected through a standard 30 or 31 gauge needle, so it's not a high viscosity experience for the physician. And from all of our preclinical studies, again, we have uh, an exception, uh, anticipate an uh, exceptional overall safety profile. Uh, in addition to our lead product, uh, VLTR557 for wet AMD, we're anticipating it will enter the clinic in uh, the first part of 2024. Uh, we have a second product following closely on its heels where we've taken off the anti-VEGF antibody and replaced it with an anti-TNF. Um, this is a long-acting therapeutic for uh, uh, chronic uveitis and ocular inflammation. And as you can imagine, we can just keep replacing the drug of moiety on the backbone in order to generate new products for, for new indications. And if you can think of a, a product that's currently under clinical investigation, we probably have something cooking in-house to be able to leverage that mechanism for a long-acting version of the product. Um, the reason we're able to innovate so quickly in this space is the overall platform is the same for, for all of the products in our pipeline. The chemistry used to conjugate the drug to the backbone is the same, and in fact, most of the antibody components are also the same. We're really just swapping out these loops that are used to interface with different targets for different indications. And I did focus on our ophthalmology platform, that made sense for OIS, but we have similar modifications to the, the composition that enable us to design medicines in oncology, immune oncology, rheumatology, uh, joint diseases, and, and for all of these different indication areas, we're able to engineer medicines with better durability, uh, potency, uh, targeting, uh, we can multiplex drugs, so this is a really great platform for designing superior medicines. So in summary, we're, we're really excited about the new investors we've recently brought in to, to Valator, um, in addition to some great expertise. Uh, they're also uh, providing us funding we need to get our lead product all the way through our first in human clinical study. Um, we're also uh, well positioned to uh, build out an ophthalmology uh, pipeline uh, and, and a, a strong franchise in ophthalmology, and we look forward to coming back and giving updates. If anyone has any more questions or uh, would, would like more information, uh, please come find me at one of the networking sessions, and uh, thank you for your attention.